Hello everybody. Today it's going to be a mechanical video. So I just got back to St. Petersburg a couple days ago from Sochi and uh, since I got the new Chinese car I don't drive much of my Ford Explorer. Well because it's a new car and you know. Anyways I figured you know I crank, that, crank up the Ford Explorer and uh, I drove it to take the trash out and I see the battery light is on I barely made it back so this this morning we're starting it from uh, giving a little charge on the battery and I think my alternator I think my alternator is bad so this video is about replacing the alternator on a 2014 Ford Explorer 3.5 liter non-turbo right behind me Hope you guys will enjoy it or not who cares all right got the car in the yard got my uh charger on it i'm gonna charge the battery real good and then i'm gonna try and check the check engine light with a computer and also do the old school take the terminal off while the car is running and the car dies completely about 90% of the time that's the alternator and pop the cover off and everything and see how hard it is to get it out so I hooked up my scanning tool I know every redneck should have a professional scanning tool and as you can see the battery is dropping so if I'm giving it even if I'm giving the gas it's slowly drop dropping down because I had to charge it up so the alternator is not pulling out putting out any any voltage so now i can safe assume that it's the alternator and i'm gonna take it out yeah so before pulling the alternator i have checked all the fuses the relays checked all that i even checked and bypassed the uh alternator uh, fuse very primitively done but pretty much there's a there's a little fuse inside here well you can see it right here that's the fuse right here and I bypassed it just just rig this up here just to make sure that we're getting power since of course I don't have a uh, diagnostic tool for the electrical stuff but it's safe to say that the alternator is bad so now <clears throat> now i need to disconnect the battery and get the alternator out of here all right so you got to disconnect the terminal on the battery just a uh, size 10 and then you got to take the uh the serpentine belt off and what i use is i use just a 30 size wrench uh put on the pulley and uh, you can push the pulley forward and with your other hand take the uh, take the serpentine belt off the other thing is i need to disconnect the uh, cable on the battery the power cable that goes to, uh, not battery but to the alternator that's like a size uh, 12 or 13 probably half inch in american disconnect the uh the connection to the alternator and then there's two bolts that hold it on top i don't know if you can see on top and uh and uh on the bottom there's a bolt that's right there somewhere and then there's a bolt onto the uh alternator so let me get all that off and uh yeah and of course to actually get the alternator out you need to take the radiator fan off to take the radiator fan off you need to take the air box and all of that little stuff that goes through the air box uh, intake uh, you have to take the air box the air filter and then there's two or four bolts size 10 to hold the radiator uh, uh, fan clutch thingy here you have to take this off so let, let me do that now all right got it out let me show you here she is and you can't really tell what's wrong with it by just spinning this of course so got two bolts that hold it 
This is the lower boat. And she goes here. You don't have to, you, know, you don't actually have to, yeah, you have to pull it all the way out. Never mind. Yeah. And you got the top bolt that goes here. And pretty much that's it. Uh, plug, power cable. Um, yeah, overall, to take it out, it takes about 40 minutes, plus minus, depends how you work. Now I gotta take it to the uh, auto parts store and match it up to, uh, to the new one and put the new one in. All right, got it fixed. <clears throat> so uh, a new one was quite expensive. A used one was quite expensive. Um, used one's like $180. A new one is about four hundred fifty dollars. Thank you for sanctions. I got it fixed for sixty bucks with one year warranty. It was uh, was something wrong in it. The guy told me I don't remember uh, something to do with the uh, with the little brushes not not touching the thing. One of the brushes were was wore out, and he replaced also two wheel bearings because the wheel bearings were already like in bad shape so I got it here now I gotta put the uh, alternator back in there two bolts hold it on top on the bottom uh, put the serpentine belt back on with my uh, 30 size 30 wrench quite easy put the uh, radiator fan back in it the air box and connect the plugs should be good to go I uh, figured I'm not gonna make a video of how I'm putting it back together that's quite self-explanatory I don't have the car and jack stands I mean you see the car you can reach everything from from the top from under the hood <clears throat> so I'm gonna do that I'm not sure if I'm gonna do it right now I might do it tomorrow we'll see I got some steaks on the grill that I'm about to make some and uh, then we'll crank it up and check and see if uh, if it works. So see you in a sec. So the toughest part, toughest part is to get that one bolt right there. And if you if you can see it, I am shining right on you. Yeah, nope, not that one. Where is the bolt? Right there. Yep, you see it? It's right over there. That bolt. That's the toughest part. The other boat, the other boat is right here. I don't know if you can see it, right, right here. Yep, that little part right there sticking out. That's the other boat. So what I used is a, a ratchet air tool. It's a size 15. You just go there, you hold it, and it's all good. So. The next second toughest part is to uh, put the serpentine belt back on. So you just stick it in here, stick it on the pulley, and just push it this way. And that's it. So I got that all on there. The belt looks still still pretty good. Now I got to connect the uh, the terminal to the uh, alternator. Connect all the plugs and put the radiator back in the car. And the radiator is held by only two bolts. Only two bolts are holding it. Uh, this one bolt here, size 8. And there's another bolt right here, size 8. Right, Brucey? Yeah, dude? Yeah. So now I'm going to put the uh, radiator back in and um, connect the, uh, the plugs and stuff to it. The fan clutch uh, plug. And see if it'll fix the problem. All right, got the ventilator back in, the, the fan, the air box. Let's connect the uh, battery and, and see if she will crank kind of hard doing it with one hand but it's all right i got it i got it all right nice and tight 
Let's put the tools in a safer place. Put the sockets up so they don't shake down. All right. Let me grab some of my. What, what, what's the man? Good name. Magic potion. <laughs> All right. Let's see if she's gonna start. All right. Moment of truth. All right, that's a good sign. All right, door, whatever, tire pressure. All right. All right, I think, I think. I think she's all good. Display mode. Let me see the RPMs. Uh, okay, okay. Let her run a minute. Let her run a minute. See if the battery's gonna charge up. Terminals are nice and tight. Nice and tight. But I think that fixed the problem. I think that was a, a bad part in the alternator. Power steering. Yep. The electrical power steering on this thing it works oh, so there you have it that's how you fix an alternator on a uh, port gen port explorer fifth gen four to fifth I don't know it's 2014 2013 <laughs> it don't matter 2013 14 all the same so um, hope you enjoyed the video remember I don't care if you subscribe whatsoever but thanks for watching it. <clears throat> Maybe I taught you something. I know it wasn't like a step-by-step -step type fixing, but um, you get the uh, overall picture of how to replace an alternator. And if you don't, you shouldn't be doing mechanical work if you can't replace that alternator like that. Yep, well, wherever you're at, have a blessed and wonderful day. Peace.